This is a very fluid situation. This is not a time, as we've seen other cities react to this, for public gatherings. They're literally becoming cauldrons for this virus. And the reality of what life is right now, I mean, you've got to get this epidemic under, under wraps. I think the players anticipated that spring training was going to be stopped. I don't think baseball had any choice to do anything other than what they've done today. When baseball does resume, are we able to start early enough to have a full 162 game season? This is an unprecedented situation. The sport is making an effort to, to get going. It's a tough circumstance. It's a lot of challenges involved. I think anything can happen. It's 2020, but they don't feel like they're, that they're comfortable being in, in this environment. And this is a choice that they're going to have, you know, not only my backing, but the organization's backing if, if somebody decides that they don't feel comfortable playing. We feel like we've got a good plan in place to execute this season. We're up against unpredictable circumstance here. After getting in here and seeing this, you know, I was just kind of wowed by the, the setup here at Camden Yards and how clean and, and thorough and, and spacious everything is. How do you think it's going to be playing games without fans? Weird. Um, definitely. Uh, but it, at the end of the day, it's no different. A guy's on the mound trying to throw his best stuff at you and you got to do your best to square it up. And, you know, I, I really don't think it's going to be any different once the games get going, because, you know, yeah, it's, you know, I lied, it is going to be different. <laughs> it's going to be way different, man. It's, uh, but we're just, like I said, we're, we're really looking forward to just get going, play baseball again and, and give the fans something to, to watch and look forward to. This whole thing's been unique. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, we've talked a lot about it as a club is, is uh, obviously we're going to be as safe and healthy as possible, not only for ourselves, our teammates, but for the people back at home. Our guys are very understanding of that and recept very receptive to it. So I think that we're, we're going to follow the guidelines as well as we possibly can, continue to have conversations, continue to remind young guys about it. But yeah, it's obviously a concern for everybody, uh, your family members that are that are home and and um, protecting them as well. I, I can't praise enough the uh, prep work that our organization has done, uh, ballpark operations, Greg Bader, Troy Scott, uh, uh, Brian Ebel, and Sean Curtin on the medical side. I mean, they, they've transformed Camden Yards. Our players have been complimentary and feel good. I understand that, that things may happen, but we feel that we've done everything we can do under unprecedented circumstances, and we like our chances to uh, have a successful season. But, you know, there's there, there are going to be aspects of the way we handle this that, that may evolve. I can't tell you how many meetings and phone calls we've had since April. Uh, I have been busier these past six months than I have been in, in many, many years. It's been phone call and Zoom meetings and conference calls and league discussions uh, that really, you know, it's been quite a process. With over 100 pages of protocols and all the things the players are going to be asked to do to stay healthy for themselves, their team and their sport, how challenging is that? Have you had a chance to look at that? I don't know how hard it will be for other guys. Um, I can only speak for myself, but we're going to police each other. We're going to be, we're going to hold each other accountable. Everything we've been doing so far is definitely sustainable. And I think precautions that all of us are taking right now, if, if we continue to just be proactive with that and make smart decisions when we're away from the field. We recognize that it's going to be impossible to, to totally um, head off any any infections amongst our people because they they go out and live their lives even when they're not here even though they're being very careful uh, but we just want to make sure that this environment where we've got our group together we want to do our very very best to make sure this doesn't become any type of uh, transmission vector and that's going to be the key to having a successful season if all the clubs can do that
when you started to look at the things that we had to accomplish, we had to change everyone's behaviors. How do we change the clubhouse guys' behaviors, the ground staff behaviors, even the ballpark ops and, and sort of everyone else? Because you just couldn't go where you wanted to go anytime you wanted. It all had to be planned and it all had to be thought through. Our baseball team has been working tirelessly to keep our facility safe for all of our players, all of our coaches, all of the staff members who make our season possible. One of the biggest things when we started the planning effort back in March or even April when, when all this started to occur was we wanted to keep the ballpark separate from the warehouse because they're two different functions. The organization has, has done a phenomenal job of limiting people who can be in either building. They're very limited touch points of, of coming into the facility. We're pretty organized with the testing, the intake, uh, with what we need to do with treating the players. And it's kind of run seamlessly. I don't get much sleep at night because I wait for the test results to come back from the lab, which I usually get from 11 p.m. till 2 a.m. So I don't, I don't rest easy until I get those, those negative test results. We added fencing and trailers. Um, a lot of things on the exterior to keep all the tiers separated. Um, as well as on the inside, we expanded the dugouts. Tier one was mainly players, coaches, doctors, and some training staff. Tier two, only people that had to be around the players for a sustained amount of time. And then sort of everyone else that needed to be in the ballpark is a tier three, and that is everyone from a security person to cleaning to a lot of the staff that doesn't need that contact with players and coaches on a, on a on really a regular basis because the goal was to keep everyone as, as, as separated as possible. We've extended a lot of the testing and the mitigation strategies to what we call the tier three individuals. Those are the individuals don't, that don't have close contact with the team, but they're still involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the stadium and also the broadcast. And ownership made it very clear that they wanted to extend everything we're doing for the tier one, the players, uh, and the tier two staff, the, the closer sports staff, to the tier three individuals. And I'm not sure a lot of teams are doing that. Kudo for the Orioles ownership and senior management for giving us the resources to be able to test those personnel and keep everyone safe here. We're using a couple of labs. Smyrtle obviously is a, is a converted uh, anti-doping uh, lab in Utah that MLB has helped fund. The great thing about testing and sending our samples to that lab uh, is that it doesn't take away from any public health resources in the community. So this is all private funded and, and privately sent so that not to use resources uh, here and around Baltimore and Maryland. I think we've done an outstanding job, really, right from the very beginning. It was clear from sort of the ownership group on down that, you know, they wanted to take this serious and do the right thing. And so MLB has put out kind of a, a standard of things for us to do. I can honestly say that the Orioles, we've gone above and beyond that standard and, and really done an excellent job putting this whole thing together. So our testing procedures are that we do a, a PCR saliva test every other day. And we usually get the results of those tests back in 36 to 48 hours. I'm gonna take you uh, through the Orioles intake compound today. Uh, we have tier one and tier two access here. This is how we enter the facility every day. Uh, over on this side of the fence, we have tier three for other oil employees, masking employees, uh, and other contractors that come into the ballpark. So we're on tier one, tier two access right now. I'm gonna take you through our intake process and what that looks like every day. Good morning, how are you? Good. This is the home testing trailer right here, and this is the testing for visitors. So when the visitors' buses pull up here, the visitors' team, the visiting team will go through here uh, and do their testing and their intake there, and then come through this way. We enter the facility have hand sanitizer stations and PPE station inside the intake trailer. And this is the home side. I walk over here to reception so I can do my, I've done my home screen already with my temperature scores and now I'm gonna do my facility screen now that I've uh, entered the facility. What's up, Kyle? Hi, Brian. I'm gonna run you through a few questions and I'm gonna take your temperature. Sure. Okay. Start with the temp. It's 98.0. Sure. So you said you've already done your home I did my home screen this morning. In the past 72 hours, have you experienced any of the following symptoms? Shortness of breath or difficulty breathing? 
I've passed my home screen this morning, now I've, I've passed my facility screen, which basically means nobody that's ill or sick for the day will, will be granted access to the ballpark. So as long as everyone passes their screening, their symptom screens and temperature screens, we're gained access to the ballpark. Today has, happens to be a testing day. Hey, Martinez. Good morning, how's everybody? How are you guys doing? You guys good? All right, so. Okay, so here's your test. Okay. So now I'm gonna go into one of these rooms to, to perform my spit test. So now I've completed my saliva sample and I'm gonna throw the top here in the biohazard and cap it off. Throw this away, San sanitize my hands and turn in my sample. That's correct. I'm gonna stand in there and we're gonna check the last four to make sure that they match up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks guys. So now I've tested now we're gonna head into the facility. So we cross the service road, Oriole players on this side, the visiting team will be on this side um, through these bicycle gates here. So this is our entrance into the, where we'll enter down into the Orioles uh, service level and clubhouse area. But you might notice at the top of the area here, we have a kind of an overflow area where guys can go on rain, de on rain delays or they can come up here and eat if they want to. Uh, at the top of the stairs where it's socially distanced. We have tables in here, hand washing stations, um, where guys can come up if they need to get some fresh air. Hi. So come on down, we're going down to the service level. Hi, how are you? So we're on the service level area now here, and if you go here to the left, this is the where the visiting cl uh, clubhouse is. Where the, behind that curtain where the visiting team is. They have a separate entrance that they use a little bit beyond those bicycle gates where we were at the top. Uh, and so they'll go down that entrance and they'll end up on this end. This way is the Orioles clubhouse. So now we're in a restricted area right now. This is a restricted bubble. Uh, and you can tell we have signs throughout uh, this area. The end of this bubble, if you can look down the hall, ends right down here uh, where this other uh, curtain is. So this is all restricted area right now. This is the entrance to the Orioles clubhouse right here. And you'll see players are coming in now. Morning. Morning. And so this is where we enter. Okay, now we're gonna show you how the Orioles food service works. Our kitchen uh, is, is grab and go only. So it's in one door with gloves and mask and everything is pre-packaged, pre-wrapped. You grab it, take it on the go, you eat socially distanced that way. The clubhouse, it's completely different. We, we've socially distanced all the lockers, so all the lockers are spread out six feet or greater. The showers have been changed. Some of the heads have been capped and taken off in the shower area. The same thing in the sinks and the bathroom areas have been changed. We have PPE stations, hand washing stations throughout. We have hand washing stations in the dugout and the bullpens on the field. We have seating charts on the plane, seating charts on the buses. We kind of socially distance people to the best we can on, on the buses. Uh, we're running four or five buses to and from the ballparks every day while we're on the road. Uh, our seating chart on the plane is kind of strategic in that we're not sitting catchers together, you know, some coaches spread out, my staff spreads out, position players, outfielders, pitchers, they all they spread out and we kind of spread them out strategically so that there's not a cluster should, should someone get sick. It's worked out really well. I'm, I'm lucky to have a, a great support staff. Uh, of not only athletic trainers, but you know, team physicians and infectious disease consultants uh, that I talk to. The organization as a whole has, has pulled off a great year. We've kept everyone safe and healthy, given how much attention has been put forth towards putting um, virus prevention protocols first. We're gonna figure out a way to do anything. I mean, this is uh, as important an institution as there is in the United States, and, and there are a lot of really smart, um, really dedicated people working on on keeping it going.